chances are that many of you have already heard about that big oops at the Oscars. Well, everybody's talking about it this morning. Let's show you now what happened. For best picture. <laughs> You're impossible. <laughs> Come on. La La Land. <laughs> But that joy was short-lived. As the crew of La La Land was in the middle of their acceptance speeches, it became painfully apparent something was wrong. Then came the bombshell. So keep dreaming. I'm sorry. No. This, there's a mistake. Moonlight, you guys won Best Picture. Moonlight won. Come on, this is not a joke. Come this is not a joke. I'm afraid they read the wrong thing. This is not a joke. Moonlight has won Best Picture. Moonlight, best picture. So with a mixture of joy and confusion, the cast and crew of Moonlight slowly made their way to the stage. This is the cast and crew of La La Land began to leave. Okay, for more on how this happened and how it could happen, we're joined by CTV's Jamie Barocker. Good morning, Jamie. I'm getting goosebumps just watching it played back. It's honestly hard to watch. It is. Unfortunately, it's what everyone is talking about yeah. this morning, so it's kind of not the highlight of the Oscars, but it's what people are, right? It's what people are remembering. Definitely unfortunate. So you saw how La La Land was mistakenly given that award. We're gonna take you back and break this whole thing down. Let's start with the moment when Faye Dunaway and Warren Beatty read the wrong winner. And the Academy Award. <laughs> for Best Picture. You're impossible. <laughs> Come on. La La Land. So the producers of La La Land accept the award, but then chaos erupted as Oscars producer and host Jimmy Kimmel came on the stage to make sure the mistake was corrected. Here's La La Land's producer Jordan Horowitz when he realizes that there's been a mistake. I'm sorry. No. There's a mistake. This, there's a mistake. Moonlight, you guys won Best Picture. Moonlight won. Come on, this is not a joke. This is not a joke. I'm afraid they read the wrong thing. So the team for Moonlight was in total shock and tears as they learned they were the real winners. So how did this all happen? Take a closer look at the announcement. You can see that Warren Beatty is hesitant there. In Beatty's hands, the envelope actually reads, actress in a leading role, not best picture. He later took to the stage to explain exactly what happened. I want to tell you what happened. I opened the envelope and it said, Emma Stone, La La Land. That's why I took such a long look at Faye and at you. I wasn't trying to be funny. Poor guy. And speaking of Emma Stone, she brought home the award for Best Actress, but backstage she was still in shock over the Best Picture mix-up. I'm so beyond excited for Moonlight. I think Moonlight is one of the greatest films of all time. So as far as I'm concerned, I think this is like the coolest outcome ever. Um, but the process of getting there was uh, a trip. <laughs> handled with class. Now, even though it was an awkward moment, it seemed to be handled fairly well by all those involved. Both film crews were extremely gracious, as you could see. It was definitely a moment for the history books, Marcia. Okay, so the accounting firm, Price Waterhouse Cooper, they're in charge of the ballot counting. What are they saying about this blunder? Well, of course, they had to say something. So they did issue a statement overnight, writing, in part, we sincerely apologize to Moonlight, La La Land, Warren Beatty, Faye Dunaway, and Oscar viewers for the error that was made during the award announcement for Best Picture. The presenters had mistakenly been given the wrong category envelope. And what people may not realize is there's actually two copies of each winner's envelope. So Amazon said she had hers with her name on it, but there was another envelope reading the same thing backstage. Only that one ended up in Warren Beatty's hands. Marcia? Okay. I know. Jamie, thanks for that. Chris Bumbray is a film critic with JoeBlow.com. He joins me now from Montreal with more on this. Chris, how could this happen at the Academy Awards? 
Well, you know, it's not unheard of, though, actually. I was doing a bit of research last night because our Twitter feed on Joe Blow was going was going absolutely crazy uh, with what had happened. And in 1964, Sammy Davis Jr., same thing happened to him. He was given the wrong envelope. He was announcing best score, and he was given the envelope for best song. And even more embarrassingly, back in 1934, Will Rogers was giving the best director award. And he just, for some reason, he read out the name. He said, oh, come and get it, Frank. But the problem was that there were two Franks nominated. And Frank Capra thought that he had won and rushed the stage. But it turned out it was actually Frank Lloyd for another movie. So the outcome, I mean, it was embarrassing, but it was handled with dignity, I think, by both crews. Uh, I felt bad for both movies, though, because um, the whole the whole mix-up really takes away from, from, the, from the achievement that both films had. Because they're both amazing movies. And the race was really really tight between them uh but both handled it very well i gotta say though i feel pretty bad for warren Beatty. do you why because a lot of people on social media are slamming him because they think that he threw faye dunaway under the proverbial bus by having her read the name of the film well, you know, the thing is, when he got the envelope, I mean, I feel like he should have looked at it and should have just said that there was a mistake. It would have been as easy as that. That's actually what Sammy Davis Jr. had done when the same thing happened to him in 1964. Um, but I don't know. I think he was confused. I think he was just, you know, if you know about Warren Beatty, he's never been somebody who's been super comfortable with public speaking. Whenever he actually has to make a speech or something, usually it ends up going kind of wrong. He's a great actor, but he's just, he's not good at, at speaking off the cuff or even giving interviews. Um, I think he was just very nervous when he saw what had happened and was kind of confused and was kind of turning to Faye Dunaway. And I think she just saw Lull and the name and just and just read it out. So I don't know. I don't think that it necessarily it, it has anything bad to say about either of them. It's kind of sad, though, because it was a nice moment reuniting Bonnie and Clyde yeah. you know, after 50 years, bringing them both up on stage. But uh kind of ruined by this uh by this kind of turn of events yeah the blunders literally stole the show okay so let's talk uh about some other aspects of last night's show mm -hmm. politics took center stage mm -hmm. no real surprise there as no. hollywood is not entirely comfortable shall we say with the new president here's a bit of jimmy kennel kimmel let's listen i think it's important that we all i know we've all seen it all but it's important that we take a second to appreciate what is happening here we're at the oscars the academy awards you're nominated <laughs> You got to come. Your families are nominated. Your friends. Some of you will get to come up here on this stage tonight and give a speech that the president of the United States will tweet about in, in all caps during his 5 a.m. bowel movement tomorrow. So there were lines throughout, references throughout. None of it over the head. But uh, what did you make of politics kind of weaving its way into to last night's show? I mean, you, I, you had to see it coming. I totally did. Um, I thought it was funny, though, that Jimmy Kimmel, the tweets that he sent to Donald Trump during the show, yep. uh, already have gone down as his most favorited and retweeted tweets of all time. And that's just <laughs> in, you know, in, in 12 hours or however long it's been since the show. Um, it, what's funny, though, is with the best picture envelope situation, the uh, on, on social media, all the actors are all posting that uh, maybe that's the same thing that happened with the election. Maybe the wrong <laughs> result was what was read. Um, <laughs> I thought it was one of the better shows, though, to be honest. I think Jimmy Kimmel did a really good job. I was a little bit uh, wary about the tour bus uh, sketch, but it ended up going over pretty nicely, I think. Uh, you know, everybody made, you know, good, dignified speeches. But the point is, even when somebody when somebody didn't mention um, the, the political situation, though, people were almost c c criticizing them on Twitter. Casey Affleck, for one, who gave a really kind of short speech, I don't think he actually thought he was going to win didn't mention anything about Trump or, or, or anything political. And people said that he had kind of wasted his moment to mm. not make a, to not acknowledge what was happening. So that's kind of sad, but it was, but it was that people say that because it is at the end, just about the, the awards, I guess, but you can't help but criticize, you know, what's happening. And especially with somebody like Asghar Farhadi, who, who would have won best, uh, best, best foreign film for the salesman. He didn't attend because he was, uh, he was protesting the proposed immigration ban that Trump's trying to put through. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so a, definitely a dramatic evening, but what a uh, night! Yeah, <laughs> one for the history books. Oh, uh, absolutely. Chris Bombray with JoeBlow.com. Thanks so much for that.